and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Artemis, the latest album from electronica violinist Lindsay Sterling. Now this is going to be a bit of a different review because we're dealing with a mostly instrumental album with a couple of vocal tracks, although one of them is a bonus one. Um, so we're generally going to be going with overall driving concepts and what imagery is generally conjured up by the songs, at least the imagery that was conjured up for me. Um, first things first, I will say that for me, this is a stronger album overall than the last album, Brave Enough. Um, technically, the last album was warmer in the winter, but... I feel like it's not really fair to count that because that was predominantly cover songs as opposed to original material. But anyway, I feel overall this was stronger than Brave Enough, but Brave Enough had more tracks that stuck in the mind faster. So this album took a few more listens for the songs to actually stick in the mind but generally speaking I was getting into it more uh, there weren't any instances of tracks that made me go uh, I think I might skip this one I like through and through I enjoyed the album so let's go over some of the driving concepts that the album is going into so overall concepts of the album have been holding out hope in the darkness and feeling protected by that which cannot be seen but you feel the presence of. So for example one of the quotes from The Inslave is just because the moon is covered in shadow doesn't mean she's not still there and that she won't fight to reclaim her full light. So, that I feel is I, one of the things that has drawn me to Lindsay's music is the fact that you've always got this sort of driving feel of hope that seems to be, like, if you've done research you'll know that she's struggled with various mental health issues. Uh, that does seem to resonate with me a bit. Uh, there's a odd coincidence, Devin Townsend and Lin Lindsay Sterling both love them both and both of them, their music is fueled by finding the light in the darkness. I would fully support a collaboration if that were ever possible. But yeah, so, so you've got the idea of being surrounded, being protected and guided. One of the dr running themes that you do, you can note, sort of like, on Brave Enough you had Gabby's song and that was completed through her, it was originally a collaboration of her and Gabby and then once he'd passed she took a time to get back to it and eventually was able to hear him guiding her. And it kind of feels like you've got that and also um, the passing of her father and being able to resolve her feelings of those losses and that has been sort of a driving force of feeling that they are still there. Um, so yeah, going properly into the album, um, I will say I did have a lot more, whilst they, the songs didn't necessarily stick in my mind as much as some of the ones from Brave Enough. I felt that they had a bit more emotional resonance for me and I was able to... I like, I quite like to, with a lot of songs, especially instrumentals, just see where my mind takes me and there was definitely a lot of fantastical sort of mixture of fantastical and cyberpunk-esque imagery that was running through my mind and I felt that maybe that was influenced by the videos that she released, maybe that was just 
how how my brain was picking up on the songs. You've got the lead single of Underground, and this is a rare instance where I'd say the lead single is one of the strongest tracks on the album, and that's by no means to say that any of the songs are weak. It's just to say that that was that was a really good decision, sort of, you got that song out and it's stuck in the mind. Um, it definitely conjured up sort of images of street gangs as of rebels sort of wandering the underground and you get this feeling of sort of striving against the darkness and finding a better way and finding the light. Maybe it's just my interpretations of things, maybe that was the intention, but it does it does feel like this is all a concept album and Underground is setting the groundwork and you build up with Artemis. You get the impression that Artemis is sort of like, that. It, that's the hero of the concept album, that's who is leading this rebellion, that's who's guiding people to a more hopeful future. Which is appropriate because that is Lindsay's avatar. Um, she did this whole virtual concert on YouTube which um, was using a lot of motion capture to portray her as sort of this CGI character who... You kind of got this feel that it was sort of a, a hero of music kind of deal. That was the feel that I got from it and I, like um, so it, you've got um, for the album cover it's all anime style kind of depiction of Lindsay or Artemis. It's kind of funny because it's all Artemis, if you've ever done any sort of role-playing games or anything like that your character is generally an extension of an aspect of yourself and Artemis definitely feels like it's a representation of Lindsay and the struggling against everything. You get the feel that Artemis is that extension and well in the Insleeve you've got, I'm not sure how well this will show up on the camera but you've got Lindsay sort of dressed up as Artemis uh, in terms of the goddess of the hunt and you've also got her as the character but the idea, the background is that the intention is to have this symbol of hope represented by Artemis. Next we've got Till the Light Goes Out and that feels like it's continuing the story and it's breaking out of, or if you like, it's kind of a Logan's Run type of deal where you're breaking out of this oppressive controlling environment and finding the freedom and the light of sort of a wild a wilderness that is untamed but allows you to live how you want. Um, I, I just get, I get this image of people running from the city and breaking through the the, lim the city limits into this lush verdant forest and that's where they call their home. Again this is reinforced by the next song between Twilight, which I just I imagine Artemis going through the wilderness and it's during night time she's looking at the starlit skies and she's wondering about what the future is that she has to face. Following on from that we've got Between Twilight, which I feel reinforces the idea that there's been this escape to a forest, a wilderness, and just finding something much more free. I I get this image of the character of Artemis sort of wandering through this forest and stargazing as she's doing so and re-engaging with the natural. And it just it has a very peaceful feeling to it. Uh, Hope has started to be reignited in Artemis herself 
It's not simply that she is being the symbol for hope. From that we've got Forever Glow. That generally just gives me a feeling of everlasting hope and light and it just is sort of the concept keeps getting layered. After that we have Love Goes On and On featuring Amy Lee of Evanescence. This is one of those cases where I saw it and I was sort of like Ah, those two have collaborated. Good to see. We've got artists working together. It's not simply a case of it's just a one-time thing or anything like that, because for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Lindsay was playing support for Evanescence last year, and there were instances of her performing with them. And I, I just really like the fact that more has come of that interaction, and it, it's definitely in the vein of Those Days and Gabby's song, tracks like that. Very much a case of whilst the person is no longer with you, you still feel the love for them. It doesn't matter how long it's been, you can still feel as strongly about them as you did when they were still alive, when they were still there. And it's just, it's very much, it's very much emphasising that whole concept and you can tie it into the various concepts and imagery that's been presented by this album. You, you could say that um, these rebels, these people who've escaped from constricting and overbearing environments have majorly, they've majorly continued because they still believe in the, in their loved ones being there, being all around them no matter what happens and guiding them through life and I just I just find it a very beautiful song I, I feel like whilst I've been iffy on some tracks that Lindsay's done that have had vocalists I feel like this needed that I, I feel like especially Amy Lee's vocals like they definitely work stupendously with how this song sounds. Next, you've got Masquerade. Now this gave me major Panic at the Disco vibes at first. I ran it by one of my friends who's a big fan of their earlier stuff and she was like, yeah, th this sounds a lot like uh, their early album, A Fever You Can't Sweat Out, um, which I, I was glad I wasn't just sort of like, this sounds to me like Panic at the Disco. I was glad it wasn't just me that was getting that vibe but it does come into its own as it progresses and by no means that's a bad influence it's just it, it was one of those oh, this sounds a bit different now this is a bit of an interesting one because you can take it as going with the concept of you know you've got the whole imagery of the rebels and sneaking out of the city and finding freedom and everything like that you can go with that and go well the masquerade is that they've rushed into the city and they're trying to gain freedom for others by presenting themselves as what they are not and you can interpret the masquerade as sort of the third act beginning. You can also think of it as when you've got depression, when you've got various mental health problems, you do feel the need to put on a facade for others and it is almost like you're dancing a ballroom dance. You dancing around people, you're dodging questions, everything like that, and you can take that into sort of like you're dodging the questions of these oppressive, domineering, controlling people, and it can be life draining and you've got to hold out that hope that you can return to where you want to be. From that we've got sleepwalking, which you can think of that as, well, it definitely has the feeling of sort of like wandering through a dream. And you can kind of think of that as when when you're dealing with those oppressive feelings, it is almost like you're sleepwalking in your own existence. But again, we've got the whole idea of you're sleepwalking as in you're just, you're going with the flow so as not to get picked out. And after that, you've got Dark Side, which... Uh, I'm not going to lie, when the strings start on that, in fact it's recurring, um, I did get 
the vibe of I almost thought it was going to break into baby you're as cold as ice I, I couldn't shake that feeling but uh, I still enjoyed it and you definitely got the feeling of sort of fearing the dark and getting comfort from the light of the moon and having to deal with the fact that um, you're in this choking environment and quite appropriately as the sister piece to Dark Side, you've got Upside. Uh, the interesting thing is there's two versions of Upside on this album, but I'll get to the second version in a moment. That's in the vein of songs like Sunskip and Prism Wed, one of the more upbeat tracks on the album. And this definitely feels like, in the narrative, you can imagine it as struggling against all these dark, oppressive, choking environments and bringing the light to everyone. So if you go from the start where it's sort of like finding the freedom to find yourself and understand yourself and as it progresses being able to go back and find the freedom and bring the hope to everyone. And that's the imagery conjured up, like everyone's being given a chance to hope. That leads on nicely into Guardian, which is... Maybe this is because I was listening to the album right after running D&D &D and I just really put my players through the ringer. Like one of my players, she had to... Like her character ha had to witness their brother being horribly corrupted by this dark evil ooze and being twisted against her and all that sort of thing. And I just, I kind of got the image when listening to Guardian of her rushing to save her brother and finally being to, able to embrace him and protect him from anything that might try to take him away from his family again. And obviously you've got Artemis who is, um, what does it say in? So, goddess of the moon and the hunt, daughter of Zeus, mission to light. I don't quite get that last bit, but none the more for that. It, it definitely worked well into the whole idea of Artemis being the a protector, bringer of light, a bringer of hope, and the idea that she'll battle against all odds to protect those who need to be protected. Next, technically the last song on the album proper, we've got Aurora. I refuse to make the Simpsons reference. You can't make me do that. But with that said, this definitely gave the feeling of sort of a light show going on, sort of the cascading colours that you get from the Aurora Borealis. And it, it's shining through the dark and it's giving a glimmer of hope. And it feels like a good way to cap off the album proper. It just gives you a very nice closing to this story of going through the struggles and trials and tribulations of the weight of everything bringing you down and then being brought back up and being granted hope. Lastly, lastly, as a bonus track, we have the vocal version of Upside with L King singing on it. This was a nice compromise, I felt. Um, a poll was put out of which people preferred, and people generally preferred the instrumental. But I felt like this was a good compromise in terms of, okay, people prefer the instrumental, I, I do personally myself, but I do like Upside with L King's vocals. It definitely lends an extra dimension and greater dynamic to certain aspects of it. And this means that it's not simply relegated to existing on YouTube. I like the fact that all the artists are getting compensated properly for their work because, as we know, YouTube is problematic at best. But none the more for that. I like the fact that whilst it's not part of the album proper, it is still on the album. And it's not a case of you've got to get a special edition version of it. It's just you order the album, you get the bonus track. Overall, I'd give Artemis a 4.5 out of 5. It's stronger than Brave Enough, which at the time my rating was a 3.5 and that went up to a 4 after 
I warmed up to a few of the tracks. This, um, I'd say the rating could easily go up to a 5 simply by virtue of when the tracks start sticking in my brain properly. I'd definitely recommend it to, well, I'd recommend it to Lindsay fans, of course. I'd recommend it to Electronica fans. I'd recommend it to pretty much anyone. I mean, that goes the same for most of her music. So, um, yeah, it's, it feels a bit disingenuous if I was to say that it, simply that if you're a Lindsay fan, definitely check it out. I'd just say, if you're a music fan, check it out. But yeah, that's it for this episode. This was definitely the sort of music I was on the hump for.